I'm being chased by several men through darkened alleyways and past abandoned buildings, through a desolate urban landscape. My pursuers are steadily gaining on me, but I realize there's someone else too. Just behind me and to my right, there's a cameraman recording the events. As long as he keeps filming, I'll remain alive. I tell him to keep his camera going. Meanwhile, I notice walking along the side of the road a young mother. I recognize her. She's one of the teen moms from a poetry class that I teach. She's one of my favorites. She's got a great imagination and she's a skillful poet. But I have to keep running. I keep running and running, fearing for my life. And then I startle awake, my heart racing and my veins filled with fear. Technically speaking, a nightmare is a scary dream that wakes you up. That being said, we experience a whole host of disturbing or scary dreams that we might call nightmares, whether we wake from them or not. And there's a spectrum of how scary a typical nightmare might be. So you wake up from a scary dream, but you can fall right back asleep or you wake up so terrified that you can't go back to sleep, don't feel safe enough to go back to sleep. Sometimes it's hard to get yourself back to the point of remembering that was a dream, I'm safe here in my home right now. Nightmares are quite common. 90% of people or almost everybody will experience at least one in their lifetime. And studies have shown that about five or 6% of all dreams that people have are nightmares. There are certainly people who are more prone to nightmares than others, but unless the dreams are causing you to have trouble sleeping on a regular basis, and unless they're interfering with your wake life experiences, there's really no reason to be concerned. Nightmares are a natural part of life. And when we learn how to work with them, we find that we can benefit from them. Say a bedtime prayer. If you don't have to be religious for this, a quote unquote bedtime prayer could simply be setting an intention to have safe, peaceful dreams, or it could be as simple as speaking your gratitude before bed or writing it down in a journal. What are you grateful for? What are you happy about? So to prime your mind for positive emotions. Another nice thing to do if you have children or just for yourself is to sing lullabies, sing soothing songs or have soothing music uh, playing in your house in the evening before bed. Anything to prime your emotions, make yourself feel safe and comfortable. First of all, when you wake up from a nightmare, often your heart is racing, it can be difficult to breathe. It can be really difficult to integrate back into the world of solid reality of your bed and your bedroom and the fact that in reality you're safe right now. You're okay. So when I woke up, I did what I would recommend anyone do upon waking from a nightmare. Take a moment to get yourself settled and grounded in waking reality. And that might mean taking a drink of water or sitting up in bed, turning on a light, looking around the room and reminding yourself where you are right now, where your physical body is. If you wake up breathing quickly or having trouble breathing, trying to slow your breath down, trying to take a moment at the beginning and end of each breath to just be still.
Writing the dream down is in and of itself a form of dream work because it helps us get just that little bit of distance so that we can see it more clearly. And then the other bit of dream work I did on it was a shift in perspective where we look at each character in the dream as if it might be part of ourself. So for example, I looked at the person or people in this case chasing me wondering what parts of myself, for example, emotions or beliefs or responsibilities might I be running from. And I looked at the camera person in the dream and wondered what part of myself is the witness, is the watchful eye that's really gonna save me. And for me, that ended up being my artistic self, my um, meditative self, the part of me that steps back to get perspective. And then of course there was the young poet and I saw that as the idealistic part of myself and the part of myself that has this poetic and mystical bent. And in the dream, the poet was somebody who lived in an impoverished neighborhood and who was um, materially without a lot of the necessities of life. And so I saw how that impoverished part of myself was the part of myself that wasn't getting to express herself in poetry and in the arts that are so nurturing to me. So often these nightmares really are offering us the gift of healing. They're offering us the gift of a new perspective. They're offering us the gift of showing us that something that maybe we were willing to say, oh, it's not so bad. For example, when I had this nightmare, if you had asked me, I might have said, sure, there are stresses in my life, but I'm handling it. It's okay. So that's diminishing it. The nightmare gave me the gift of waking me up to the fact that it wasn't okay. That making time for my own creative pursuits, that making time for my own soul, my own spiritual development, my own artistic side, that that was life or death to my spirit. I was not in any mortal physical danger. But the dream gives you that gift. It wakes you up to what your soul needs. You might find when you do your work on your nightmare that you need to take some small step, as little as something that you do five minutes a day or 20 minutes a day, or even just once. But in that way, you connect the message that your dream was trying to give you with your actions in waking life. And when you start to do that, you'll see things start to change for the better, and you'll feel the healings and the growth occur within you. When we learn by practicing on our nightmares to turn toward our fears, to inquire of them, what have you come to tell me? What have you come to teach me? Or when we learn to turn toward a nightmare by creating safety with ourselves and finding um, comfort so that we can face these um, scary situations productively, we can translate a lot of that knowledge that we learn from practicing on our nightmares to things that happen in waking life. So when the breakup happens or inevitably we lose someone we love by either a geographical move, breakup, or death, we can learn to look to that experience and learn from it instead of stuffing our emotions down or trying to avoid thinking about it. Just as with the nightmare, if we turn toward it in a safe environment with the support of people we love, the comfort of our family, our pets, and even the imaginative powers that we bring in to help us feel strong enough to work on these waking life situations just as we do with nightmares, we become stronger and more fully empowered people. We become courageous. We become more and more creative and resilient. 
So these lessons we learned from nightmares are well worth the effort that it takes.